2017, we released the first episode of Honest Gaming History covering Jin Kazama. Then three years later in 2020, we dropped the story of his screwed up father, Kazuya. Now in 2021, it's time to finish the trio by covering the father who is even more of a savage than Kaz. This man has been dropping lethal headbutts since the first Tekken, and is one of the strongest characters in the series lore-wise. He's ahead of the Mishima Zaibatsu, and one of the few people who survived the Kuma's raging demon. Like the dude actually tanked it, my man is crazy. This time on Honest Gaming History, we're talking about Heihachi Mishima. Play that intro, son. So the balding savage is born under Jinpachi Mishima and some random unlucky lady whose life probably got ruined when she joined his family. During Heihachi's early years, Jinpachi was ahead of the Mishima Zaibatsu. This is a multinational conglomerate that was founded by Jinpachi himself. Fun fact, apparently this company capitalized on the weapons industry during World War II. But Jinpachi didn't like the fact that he created a company that promoted the hell out of violence. So he moved away from it afterwards to focus on his dojo where he taught Mishima karate. This is where he trained Heihachi, and this boy was a little prodigy. Dude was already delivering Godfist like it was nothing. But Heihachi wasn't Jinpachi's only student. A young girl named Kazumi Hachija was brought to Jinpachi's dojo, and she trained with Heihachi. The two developed a rivalry over the years, which turned into a relationship then a marriage. They bumped nasties and gave birth to their one and only son together, Kazuya. Whose story I covered before if you want to give that a watch after. After the birth of his son, Heihachi decided that it's time he get his chance to run his father's company. So you think he talked to his dad, you know? Have a heart to heart and tell him, hey man, you're getting old. I think it's time I make this company better. But no, this man Heihachi went for the savage route and plotted a coup against his own dad. Then when his dad tried coming back for his company, this dude imprisoned him. The guy really woke up and said, fuck my dad. So now the Mishima Zaibatsu is under his thumb, but this is when everything changes. One seemingly normal day, Kazumi gets knocked out by a fever. Heihachi nurses her back to health, but when she wakes up, she starts attacking Heihachi for no reason. Our guy thinks she just has split personalities, but one random evening, while he's doing his training, she comes at him as a demon ready to kill him. And all this is thanks to Kazumi being from the Hachijo clan. This was a clan of assassins who inherited the devil gene. They worked in the shadows and their job was to eliminate anyone they deemed as a threat to the world. Apparently, Kazumi was ordered to marry into the Mishima family in order to eventually kill Heihachi because they foresaw him becoming a threat to the world in the future. So Kazumi is gunning for this dude, but Heihachi is not having it. He grabs his wife and kills her. Then while looking at her corpse, he sheds a single tear. But something hits him. If his wife has this demon blood within her, then that means his son Kazuya must have it as well. So out of paranoia, this dude takes his son and throws a kid off a goddamn cliff. Man just assumed he was a devil child and killed him. That's crazy about you, Heihachi. With his whole family pretty much dead, Heihachi spends his time focused on the Mishima Zaibatsu, and around this time he adopts Li Shaolan as his son. Years later, he decides to hold the first King of the Iron Fist tournament, and this brings us to the first Tekken. Martial artists all over the world enter, but the most important participant is Kazuya, who actually didn't die from that fall. Guess that proves he's a devil. So fueled with revenge, Kazuya pushes through the tournament and gets to the final boss, his father. They duel, and Kazuya beats him this time, with the help of his devil gene. Then Kaz picks up his father's unconscious body and throws the man off the same cliff he got thrown off when he was five. Then the dude gives the most nightmarish smile ever to the player. Dude is looking at us like, gee, thanks for helping me kill my dad, bro. With Heihachi dead, Kazuya takes control of the Mishima Zaibatsu and spends the next two years building on its power. Then he announces the second King of the Iron Fist tournament. And just like Kazuya, Heihachi survived his fall off the cliff. He spent the last two years training with his old friend Kuma, who was dead ass a bear. Yeah, apparently Heihachi found Kuma as a cub. As the bear grew older, Heihachi noticed how smart he was. So he started teaching him Mishima karate as well as sign language. And this dude trusts Kuma so much that the bear was actually his bodyguard during the first Tekken tournament. You're lying. Nope, Kuma was actually a part of the first tournament, but he lost to Paul, and they ended up building a rivalry between the two. So Paul was rivals with a bear. Yup. The more you know. Anyways, Heihachi and Kuma hear about the second tournament and immediately enter. Unfortunately, Kuma loses to Paul again, but Heihachi beats Kazuya. Then he throws his body into a volcano this time. God damn, Heihachi! So now with his son dead, again, Heihachi regains control of the Mishima Zaibatsu, but oddly enough, he does something good with it. He creates a Tekken force, a private army directly under his command, then he sends his people to basically make the world a better place. Under his command, they start helping poor countries and settling any disputes warring nations may have. But don't get it twisted. His reason for doing this is just to gain the trust of world leaders. He's not a saint. Nevertheless, 15 years of this go by. Then on a random excavation mission in Central America, his forces stumble upon something crazy. A mysterious being reveals itself to his army and decimates them. After hearing about what happened to his Tekken force, he concludes that the being they found had to be Ogre. 
Ogre, otherwise known as Toshin, which means God of Fighting, is a powerful being in search of strong souls to absorb. According to legends by Native Americans, in the lore by the way, not in real life, it was a war weapon that came from outer space. Now Heihachi is hype about this, because it has always been his goal to capture Ogre, in order to make the ultimate life form. But he gets hit by another surprise. The 15 year old son of Kazuya, Jin Kazuma, shows up at his doorstep. Ogre attacked him and his mother, but she sacrificed herself to help Jin escape. The reason he's here is because his mother, Jun Kazama, told him about his grandfather before a supposed death. So Heihachi looks at this and is low key like, I mean, if you're Kazuya's son, that means you've got the devil gene in you, and I'm not trying to deal with that shit again. But then a devious thought crosses his mind. Jin is not only Kazuya's son, he's also his grandson, meaning this kid has to be some kind of broken. So Heihachi thinks to himself, I can just train this dumbass kid, make him strong, then use him as a lure for Ogre. That's some foul shit. With revenge for his mother fueling him, Jin accepts Heihachi as his master and spends four years learning from him. Once he reaches 19, Heihachi announces the third King of the Iron Fist tournament. This brings us to Tekken 3. The strongest warriors around the world gather once again, but this time Jin replaces Kazuya. With so many powerful people in one place, Heihachi knows that Ogre is bound to show up. But this time, the person who turns to the tournament is a new protagonist of the series, Jin. He makes it all the way to Ogre and somehow manages to take it out. Yo, think about that fam. A 19 year old just to got a god of fighting from outer space. This kid just beat a goddamn Saiyan. These Mishima dudes just build different, son. So with Ogre defeated, Jin prepares to leave, but his grandfather has other plans. This man assembles a Tekken force, and they straight up jump and shoot the shit out of Jin. Man killed his grandson like a mafia boss. Well, he did take out Ogre, so Heiachi has no use for him anymore. But to his surprise, Jin wakes up thanks to his devil gene. Out of anger, Owlboy runs up and mollywops his granddad, then flies off. And Heiachi's just sitting there like, Yo, you ever think about what would happen if Heihachi just tried to talk to his family? Man, I'm sure at least half of these people's problems would be solved if they used their words. But don't be stupid, don't you? This is a fighting game. The only thing guaranteed are the hands. So with Ogre defeated, Heihachi takes samples of his DNA for experimentation. He plans on splicing Ogre's DNA with his own to make himself the strongest, but it doesn't work. To successfully combine the genetic code, he needs a devil gene, and the only person left who he knows has it is Jin. So our boy goes looking for his grandson, but the only thing he finds on his search is a mysterious picture of a destroyed corpse. However, Heihachi notices the wings and realizes that this is Kazuya. His son may still be alive. This pushes Granddad to switch the target of his search to Kazuya. Can't have this boy come back from death twice. Plus, he has a devil gene so he could take that shit and kill Kaz. Kill two birds with one stone. Heihachi finds out that Kazuya was collected by G Corporation, a biotech firm. So he plans a two-pronged attack on their base to retrieve his son's body. But the attack fails when Kaz himself busts through the door waving the God Fist and takes out all of Heihachi's men. G Corp didn't only find Kaz, they also revived him. So now both Kazuya and Jin are alive, walking around with the devil gene Heihachi wants. How is he going to bring them to him? Simply by falling back on the same plan he's been using this whole time, announcing another King of the Iron Fist tournament, thus taking us to Tekken 4. Kaz enters the tournament to once again get his revenge on his father, and Jin enters because he sees a bigger picture. This whole Mishima bloodline is the problem, so he wants to end it. Kaz and Jin work their way up the ladder. Then when they're supposed to face each other, Heihachi kidnaps Jin and tells Kazuya to follow him if he wants to see his son. Together they go to a temple within the Mishima compound known as Hanmaru. After seeing Jin all chained up, Kaz morphs into his demon form, and Heihachi is left kind of shook. Granddad asks, what are you? And the devil controlled Kaz says that he is the devil. And years ago when he tried to kill him, a part of him escaped to Jin and now resides within the boy. After that, devil Kazuya slaps Heihachi away in order to awaken the devil within Jin, but he fails. Then Kazuya snaps out of the devil's control and commands his son to rise and fight him. They fight and Jin beats the shit out of his dad. Then Heihachi pulls up like, damn Kaz, you really let your own son beat your ass? That's fine, I'll show you how to beat your kids. But Jin proceeds to whoop his ass as well. Then when he's about to deliver the final blow, he sees a vision of his mother. He then lets go of his grandfather and tells him to thank his mother. Then he dips. And this moves us to Tekken 5, a game that Heihachi didn't really take part in. After Granddad and Kaz wake up from that beating they took, they get ambushed by a bunch of jackpots sent by G Corp. At first, the two work together to fight their way out. But of course, Kazuya sees this as a perfect chance to rid the world of his father. So he betrays his dad and dips. Then the jackpot self-destruct and kill Heihachi. Bruh. Nah, I'm kidding. Y'all already know this man no fuck with death. 
The explosion merely blasted him a few miles away, but it did do a lot of damage so he needs some time to recover. While he goes through his recovery, it's revealed that the explosion released Jinpachi from his prison. So this guy starts another King of the Iron Fist tournament, but he gets beat by Jin, who takes control of the Mishima Zaibatsu after this. With the most powerful company in the world in his hands, Jin decides that it'd be a great idea to plunge the world into chaos by declaring war against all the nations. To find out more about why he did this, check out the video I made covering the story of Jin. But long story short, he wants to use all the chaos in the world to summon a being known as Azazel. Jin thinks if he kills this thing, then he can rid the world of the devil gene. Kaz doesn't like how his son is out here trying to put the world into chaos when he wants to control it. So he manhandles G Corp into helping him fight against his son in the Mishima Zaibatsu. A hit is put out on Jin's head, so in retaliation, he announces the sixth king of the Iron Fist tournament, basically telling his father to come see him with the hands if he's about it. Leading us to Tekken 6. Once again, Heihachi doesn't do much here. When he hears about what Jin is up to, he enters the tournament to reclaim his company. Speaking of his company, it's currently going through a coup. Heihachi's illegitimate son, Lars Alexanderson, was a member of the Tekken Force, but after he saw what Jin was up to, he organized a rebellion against the conglomerate. Lars's mission leads him right to his father, who tries to recruit him so they can jump Jin. But in retaliation, Lars tries to shoot his father. Well, you can't say the man doesn't deserve it. But being the crazy man that he is, the guy catches the bullet with his teeth. Then Lars gets tight, for good reason, and leaves. Then Heihachi disappears for the rest of Tekken 6. After Heihachi leaves the plot, Jin successfully carries out his plan to summon Azazel, and he defeats him. But the devil gene is still within him, so he did all that war shit for nothing. Now this takes us to the latest game within the Tekken series, Tekken 7. Jin has gone MIA since his bout with that demon god, so now the Mishima Zaibatsu is open enough for the taking. Yo, I wonder how it must feel for all those workers to have so many CEO switches. Word, one day your boss tells you to make the world a better place, the next your new boss tells you to plunge it into chaos. Chaos. Shit must be stressful as fuck. But with nothing stopping him, Heihachi literally forces his way back into his company and retakes it. Then he does what he always does when he gets his shit back. He announces another King of the Iron Fist tournament. But this time, Heihachi has bigger problems outside of his family to worry about. His problems this time come from a completely different game. Apparently a long time ago, back when Heihachi was young, married, and happy, his wife came across a wounded Akuma. Yes, Akuma from Street Fighter. She nursed him back to health, and in return he promised to do her a solid. And it turns out that solid was to kill Heihachi and Kazuya. She really sent a whole assassin after her ex-husband and her son. This whole family fucked up, bro. I feel like I now truly understand why Jin is the way he is. Yeah, when most of your family only chooses violence, it's kind of hard not to come to the edge. So Akuma confronts Heihachi first, and after a dope-ass battle, he hits a guy with the Raging Demon. Now understand, the Raging Demon, or Shun Goku Satsu, takes all the sins the victim has committed and attacks their soul with it. Their soul. But guess what? Somehow, this man Heihachi survived the shit. How? You don't have the power of nothingness, at least I don't think you do. And with the amount of sins you've committed, your soul should have blown up. How the hell did this human being survive the raging demon when he's over 70? These Mishimas are built different, bro. Didn't you hear me the last time? So since Akuma thinks Heihachi is dead, he sets his sights on Kazuya. Then later, Heihachi gets up from his defeat and uses this chance to be as sneaky as he always is. First, he goes to his people at the Mishima Zaibatsu and tells them to make his death public and cancel the tournament. The shit is off. Gonna be real? Completely forgot there was a tournament in this one. We all did, bro. Then second, you know how Akuma's chasing after Kaz now? This man Heihachi starts broadcasting the fight between them worldwide, and Kaz gets caught in his devil form in 4K. Now folks, this may not sound like a big deal because Kaz has been doing wild shit since the day his father threw him off that cliff, but the average ass people of the world ain't ready for a devil CEO yet. They can't even perceive that shit. So the people of the world go against G Corp. Hashtag cancel devil corp starts trending on Twitter. But guess what y'all, Heihachi ain't even done yet. Kazuya is still alive. So he launches a laser cannon from his freaking satellite right at the G-Corp tower. Yo, granddad is wildin'. So now Heihachi is laughing his ass off, basking in his victory. But then Kaz gets up from the rubble of the G-Corp tower and shoots his dad's satellite. These guys really forgot billions of people live on this planet other than them. The satellite comes crashing down, and now the Mishima Zaibatsu is getting hate from the masses because everyone thinks they shot down their own satellite. All right, come on, people, really? That don't even make sense. So after that mess, Heihachi reaches out to an investigative journalist who was actually the narrator of the Tekken 7 story. This guy's wife and son were killed when Jin plunged the world into chaos, so he's been investigating the Mishima bloodline. For some reason, Heihachi invites the man to his dojo and tells him everything. He tells him about Kazuya. Kazumi, his past, what he did to Kazuya, everything. He even demands a guy tell it to the world. This is an odd move for him. Then, after his interview, he has his Tekken Force knock the guy out. Then he goes to confront his son to finally put an end to this feud. They meet at the most epic place to have a final battle, a volcano, and they go at it. 
Kaz is throwing everything he has at his father. The guy even taps into the strongest devil form he's ever managed to achieve. But this man Heihachi just does not know when to quit. In the end, he beats his son. Even after all the lasers, the devil attacks, and all that shit, Heihachi knocks his son down. But as he looks up at his father, Kaz thinks about everything that he's been through. He's died, lost his mother, he's had to fight for his life since day one, and it's all this man's fault. So with all of his rage, he strikes Heihachi with one final blow that kills him. Then he takes his father's body and throws it into the volcano. It's kind of crazy how these guys hate each other, but Kaz is literally following his father. Heihachi throws him off a cliff, Kaz throws Heihachi off a cliff, Heihachi throws Kaz into a volcano, and now we're here. I mean... It could just be pettiness. You're right. So afterwards, Akuma shows up ready for a second round with Kaz. They clash, but we don't get to see who wins. Then somewhere else, we finally see Jin, who's been MIA since that fight with Azazel, if you don't remember. Lars looks at him and tells him it's time he ended the war that he started. Now that the Mishima Zaibatsu is weakened and Heiachi is dead, Kazuya's just going to continue flexing his power with G-Corp. So now it's up to Jin to do what he set out to do, and end the Mishima bloodline to save the world. And that is the story of Heihachi, the full story since I'm pretty sure he's dead. Don't care how strong you are, no one just survives getting thrown into lava after their heart stops. But the dude really is one of the worst fathers in gaming history. My man really gets off on doing people dirty. But in a strange way, I still have mad respect for the dude. Yeah, I feel like as long as you're not a Mishima or a Hachijo, Heihachi's cool people. And about that move with the journalist, why do you guys think he wanted the guy to tell the world about his savagery? Do you think he knew he was walking into his death by challenging Kazuya and he just wanted to leave his mark on the world? Or do you think he actually felt remorse for all the foul shit he did? Let me know in the comments. But with that being said, here's a quick message before we get to the end slate. What's going on fam? So unfortunately, the message I have is not happy news. Thanks to someone in the comments a little while ago, I wish I saved it, but I didn't. But to the person, you know who you are, thank you so much. They let me know that the voice actor for Heihachi, Daisuke Gori, actually died in 2010. Unfortunately, he committed suicide, so I just wanted to have a part in the video since I'm talking about Heihachi to just thank him for all the work that he's done. He not only voiced Heihachi, he also voiced Mr. Satan in Dragon Ball, he lent his voice to Gundam, and he also lent his voice to Ninja Scroll. So thank you, Daisuke Gori, for all your work, and rest in peace. All right, now for the actual outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I finally finished it. I finally finished the Mishima Trio. And it's funny, after making this video, I realized how well thought out the Tekken story was. Hear me out for a sec. I feel like if the new Tekken game ends this Mishima bloodline arc perfectly, like they don't have really, they don't have to really do much. They just have to make the fight between Jin and Kazuya dope. If they end it in just a decent way, this could be one of the greatest fighting game stories ever written. I'm completely serious. It could even be better than Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat was good, but it kept on getting crazy with the time switches. But this, this right here is pretty good. I noticed, I it, it didn't really hit me, but the Tekken story is not all that crazy. It's, it's wild, yes, but it's, there are not that many plot holes. There are not so many issues. When you think about the focuses like Jin, Kazuya, and Heihachi, pretty well thought out. I like it. You know, people may have their opinions on it, but I, I very much enjoy the Tekken story and it made me realize, it made me get through Heihachi to truly realize it. So yeah, tell me, let me know how you guys feel about the Tekken story now that I finish all the Mishima characters in the series. Well, most of the Mishima characters, I believe. They're still Jinpachi. But if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that bell notification button if you want to be updated whenever I upload new content. Shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to make content like this. And special thanks to my $10 Gold Squad patrons, Dylan Boner and Iron Poet. You guys really helped me out a lot with the $10. Appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And yeah, I'm gonna, I wanna shout the $10 patrons out more often in these videos. So we go and do that from now on. All right, yeah, but with that being said, if you wanna watch more videos, you guys know where to look for them. They're right on the screen. Subscribe and everything, Patreon, uh, other social media down there and all that good stuff. And with all that being said, be easy, stay lit, take care. Black Lives Matter, stay healthy out there. And don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, fam.